So I'm here with Roger Galaban from Ericsson. We're here to talk about indoor 5G. Roger, um, great to meet you. This is an issue, I've got to say, this is an issue that's vexing me a little bit. I'm outside, I'm getting great 5G. Mm -hmm. I walk into the, the shop, the bar, the home, mm -hmm. all kinds of places, it just my signal just dies. Um, I guess that's why, why we're here talking about it. Absolutely, Gabriel, and, and thank you so much for having me. And uh, that has been one of the, the key complaints we, we, we get from people is we absolutely love what 5G can do for us, but we spent 80% of our time indoors. And where is that 5G signal when we come inside buildings? Uh, and so, yeah, we, we recognize that that is a, a big challenge that uh, operators have spent a lot of energy and focus on building out their 5G networks for macro mm -hmm. networks. But as we move up in, in spectrum, as we know, the, those, those frequencies have a harder time penetrating into buildings. Uh, so it really drives the need for dedicated in-building systems. So you can have the same uh, exciting 5G experience in-building that we get to experience outdoors. Yeah, I've been, I've been um, trawling through the ITU reports on building entry loss and all that, and there's millions of studies mm -hmm. showing pretty much what you said in, in, in a few seconds there. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess though, what one uh, one objection I do hear is uh, a lot of operators will say, you know, quite a lot of buildings have got 4G in already, mm -hmm. and you know we can do a decent job with an outside in coverage. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah, why yes. do we really need to push on the 5G side? Yeah, so so, so there there is some truth to that, uh, but there's there's also a challenge that that comes more to the commercial aspect of it, and and we'll maybe get to that a little bit later in our conversation, but. It's important to recognize that uh, the building owner uh, uh, is faced with that pain, right? Uh, if it's a, a, a multi-tenant building, for example, he's trying to bring in businesses and uh, he's not really getting commitment from the CSPs that they have CapEx fully available to invest in every new building that comes across. And if it's a new building that doesn't have the 4G solution, then they're really uh, 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 in a tough spot. Uh, the, the other piece of it, I would say, is the legacy solutions that you mentioned. They uh, have been uh, uh, architected in a way that sort of stops at 2.3, 2.5 gigahertz, if you will, mm -hmm. with all the new spectrum now being available, C-band, uh, CBRS, you have a really hard time getting through some of the more energy efficient uh, windows and structures and buildings. Uh, so the, the drive and the need is there for a dedicated system. And we could look at, okay, can we upgrade the active desk infrastructure that we might have in the building if they had a legacy solution? Uh, and then there, there are a couple of issues. One, as I mentioned, is the, the frequency range even in the coax cabling infrastructure that sort of stops at 2.5, 2.7. So you can't, in a good way, get uh, add C-band to that. The second one is... A lot of those legacy systems were done as uh, uh, CISO mode. So you, you get one branch and that's it. There's not enough capacity on that for you to say, okay, I got a similar 5G experience to what I had when I was outdoors. It's still going to be just a fraction. Most 5G systems now are doing 4x4 MIMO. Most modern devices like iPhones or Android phones, they are all supporting 4x4 MIMO as well. So now you're giving the customer 25th uh, percent of the capacity their devices can actually uh, uh, experience and are experienced outdoors. So that's also a big, uh, a bit yeah. of a challenge. Uh, so it's how do you address the cost if you have to do a rip and replace of the traditional solution that was there? So we're we're trying to think of better ways of doing that than just trying to refresh the old infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. The, the I think the the, the building owner and tenant question is, is kind of really interesting. It's evolved quite a bit that from what I can see, you know, new build developments, they're right on with it. You know, they're like, yes. we've got to have this. And it's got to be great. Exactly. Existing facilities, the disruption, that's what I guess where the, where the, where the blockage is a little bit and, and, and scaling down. You know, it's okay if you're in a tier one stadium or something mm -hmm. on an airport, mm -hmm. but it's this kind of mid-market sort of venue or yes. that, 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 that's still really a bit of a struggle. And it, it is, and uh, of course you, you have to consider the, the, the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, MNOs don't have endless capex to go invest in those buildings. So they're looking at models now where the building owner may put some money on the table to uh, uh, bring that system uh, uh, into their facility. Uh, so yeah, if you are in a, an older building that has a, 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 an older solution, uh, 
the guy next door who is bringing in a, a brand new system, he's going to have an edge in, in yeah. bringing new businesses uh, 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 over to that location as opposed to, to yours. So you may look at how can I modernize? So we, we, we would argue that from a purely technology point of view, indoor small cells is a much simpler solution than trying to refresh or do a full rip and replace of a traditional active pass. Yeah. Purely from a, a monetary point of view and simplicity of, as well, because you bring a, 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 a great point about the disruption to the business. Yeah. Uh, and that can be significant if you're doing a, a lot of uh, coax runs and you have to shut down different parts of your building. Yeah. But if you're doing something like a Wi-Fi deployment, you're just running a simple electrical CAT6 cable and installing a few units in the ceiling, then it, it, disruption is fair, fairly minimal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's certainly clear building owners have to make more of a contribution to, to the cost. We, we know right. operators aren't going to do it. And, and you know, right, it's, it's, it's the, it's, it adds value to the building, right, exactly. in the venue. So it's, 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 a, exactly. it's a great ROI, in fact. Um, Talking about indoor small cells, you brought one with yes. us. Have a look. <laughs> Let's have it on the camera here. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And I always like to travel with uh, with with one, so I can show folks uh, uh, the simplicity of it. I mean, if you look at modern Wi-Fi access points, it's about the same size, yeah. uh, and uh, the installation is pretty much identical. You bring in a, a cable, uh, uh, could be a Cat 6A cable. Now we also have fiber support if th these units are going to be located far away from a, 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 a baseband, for example. But uh, uh, the, the simplicity is certainly there. J just for comparison, the coverage you get with a unit like this is about between six to 10 to one compared to a Wi-Fi. So or you might have an area with 10 Wi-Fi access points, you only need one indoor small cell to sort of cover cover the same area. So simplicity is a big advantage. And then of course, cost when you're comparing to an active NAS, because some of these more modern uh, uh, small cells, like the, the Ericsson radio dot system, they support neutral host mm -hmm. capabilities mm -hmm. now, right? So I can get all the CSPs transmitting their spectrum on a shared unit. So in the past, you know, go back five, six years, indoor small cells struggled in, in these uh, neutral host deployments yeah, yeah, because you sure. needed to have separate ones for each mm -hmm. service provider. What, what's, what's the neutral host discussion that you're having then? I mean, in, in the UK where I'm from, it's pretty well established. That's mm -hmm. the best model. Yes. And there's a good amount of collaboration between between carriers. Have I come, mm -hmm. we're here in the US at the yes. moment. <laughs> the carriers have all got different bands. They're all competing like crazy. And it's yes. just, yeah. Yes. Um, are they, are they, uh, are they in? You know, are they into neutral host. Do you think they're going to going to go with that model? Yeah. So, so I mean, of course, we we are uh, all all of uh, the 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 big carriers here in the U.S. market are, are our customers. So we have been in, in very close collaboration with them to try to build a solution that is acceptable uh, uh, from their standpoint, but also recognizing that they will not be able to fund every venue that is out there. That's something that is simple enough that we through channel partners or neutral host companies, they can actually make the investment and bring that into, into a building and uh, hopefully lower cost than what traditional active desk yeah. used to be. So here in the US, we have now approval for these neutral host small cell solutions. Uh, and uh, we, we sort of have a, a situation here, Ericsson being the provider for all three of them, that they can have a full digital system where each one brings in their own baseband and the entire radio infrastructure inside the venue, whether it's a, an airport, a hospital, a, a, a college a, a campus, uh, it's all shared, yeah, right? Okay. So, you, you, so they can still control their, their they, they control their, their They control their, their experience, they control, they have full visibility to their KPIs. One doesn't get to see the KPIs of the other. So, I mean, you have all these very strong uh, uh, brick walls between them. They're still guaranteed, uh, but you still get the benefit of the lower cost. And then, of course, we're talking a, a, a lot these days on how can we be more conscious of uh, uh, energy consumption? Mm -hmm. That's another key advantage uh, on the indoor small cells where you have close to 70 percent or so less energy consumption than a traditional active desk. Because in traditional active desk, you needed racks of radios providing that RF input. Yeah. And that entire RF power is wasted because it's there just to be converted from RF to digital until you get to the antenna. Got point. you. Roger, we could talk all day. It's a great topic. Um, thanks very much. <laughs> it's my pleasure, Gabriel.